I think in Europe I belong to the, the scientists who make a difference in uh, electron microscopy. And I've been contributing a lot in the last uh, 25, 30 years. And I am eager to do more in the next uh, 15 years. Well, on a farm you strive to get the best products and the best results. And that's also what you have to do in the laboratory to get the most uh, scientific output. Yeah, even when I uh, am here on the farm, I think about uh, the cells now and then, yes, and I, about experiments. I was born as a researcher, I think, much earlier, yeah. With my grandfather already, I was uh, playing a lot and asking questions. And he said sometimes, uh, please stop, Peter, you ask me too many questions. So I was always wondering and never gave up wondering. So curiosity is the number one in my life. I'm a curiosity-driven person, and that is what I like. To, uh, to be involved with and to, to think uh, in creative ways to answer questions so that we better understand how uh, the, the body works. Yeah, and I got the ticket that you just uh, asked the. Uh So when I was actually 16, I decided not to take over the farm. Uh, at that time, I was considering to have an experimental farm. And so I went with my father to an open day. And uh, on my way back, I stopped at a uh, station for artificial insemination. I saw for the first time a bull jumping on an artificial cow. And the sperm that was collected went upstairs to a laboratory. And when I entered this space of the laboratory, I was completely flabbergasted by people in white coats. And, and that was for me the first time that I ever saw something under a microscope. And it was in fact moving. I saw the sperm moving and saw the histology of the testes and saw how the sperm developed. And that took me by such a surprise that I couldn't sleep the whole night. And next morning I decided uh, I'm not going to be a farmer. I'm going to become a cell biologist. So. Yeah, it was an overnight decision. Yeah. So the microscopes are indeed huge. They are very expensive. Uh, and they are needed to see all the details in the cell. Uh, these microscopes uh, work under uh, very low temperature minus 180 degrees, so you can in fact freeze living cells and look to those living structures inside the microscope after they have been prepared. And what we do is make thin slices so that we can look through the thin slices. So imagine you have a one little droplet that contains two million cells. In that one little droplet where you have two million cells, I focus to one cell and open that cell up. And when you open that cell up, you enter a new city. That city has machinery that has lots of different little macromolecular machinery that we would like to understand how it works under normal conditions and under disease conditions in the hope that we can better understand how a cell gets sick or how a virus or a bacteria enters a cell and in this way can avoid uh, these uh, diseases.
me it was more the opportunity to create a new institute and to get all the instruments stationed there and also to recruit the best scientists from all over the world and the best graduate students from all over the world, including those that are now trained in Maastricht. And uh, I hope that in two years I can open my doors for those uh, undergraduates so that I can bring them to the master degree. because uh, I want to image nanomachinery in cells and so far I was hampered by the limitation of instrumentation. And by getting all the instruments on one side in Maastricht, uh, I could do what I really wanted to do and that was for me immediately a yes. So it didn't take much to reconsider another option. I'm very keen to start and I hope that the lab is soon established. We get lots of new equipment and those instruments are very expensive and I feel very responsible to get a good output. And I'm confident that here in Maastricht I can do that and establish such an atmosphere where people from all over the world will work together. Mm -hmm.